Hello again. This is Mark French. I'm an associate professor in the Department of Mechanical Engineering Technology at Purdue University, and this is another in a series of video clips on how to use MathCAD. Today I'd like to show you a little bit about how to use solve blocks in MathCAD. Now, solve blocks are really handy. They're a way of writing out fairly complicated expressions without really any programming uh, to speak of. All you have to do is use the word given, G-I-V-E-N, put some conditions in, and then finally a command that uh, tells MathCAD you wanted to do some uh, uh, calculations. So let's try something here. Let's try to find where two curves intersect. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start my solve block with the word given, G-I-V-E-N, that's a command. And I'm going to write out one of my curves. Now, these are complicated. It's not clear what these look like. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say x squared, and then I'm going to hit Control equals to get that bold equal sign, times 2, or equals 2, times x times y, minus x times sine x. Now, in order to plot this uh, as a function, you'd have to solve for y in terms of x, or x in terms of y. y in terms of x would be easier. And plot this. And then you'd have to plot this one. Let's do another function, x times y. Again, control equals cosine y. Now, good luck solving that one for y. Um, if you take the inverse cosine of both sides, you'll clear the cosine there, but not there and then you go back and forth and back and forth that way. So it's, it's, very, it's not possible to solve for y here. You could solve for x in terms of y and maybe plot it that way. But it's going to be tough to do this graphically. Now, we're going to ask for a MathCAD to find a, a value of x and y that satisfies both of those expressions. And it's not very easy to do this graphically. Now, in order to, order to do this, it's going to need a... Uh, uh, initial guess. So I don't know what to use. I'm just going to guess 0, 0. That's probably not the right answer, but it doesn't really matter. Um, many numerical algorithms, including the ones MathCAD is using for this problem, require an initial guess. And since uh, MathCAD has no idea what functions we're going to type in right there, you have to give it the guess. It can't make one on its own. So it doesn't have to be very good. It just has to be a starting point. So I've got an initial guess. I've opened the solve block with the word given, put in some uh, conditions that need to be met. Those two functions need to be satisfied. And the last thing I do is type in find x, or I'm sorry, x comma y. That says find me the x and the y that uh, satisfy those two uh, equations. And there they are. Now I've got some overlap, so let's move that down. So there you go. That's a solve block. It's the initial guess. And the solve block is the area between given and the command that tells MathCAD to uh, do a calculation. This right in here is the, the, the guts of the solve block. That's the part that's important. So you can put any set of equations in here you want, and MathCAD will find them assuming there's an answer. There may not be an answer. Just because you, I type in those two equations doesn't mean there is a value of x and y that will satisfy both of them. It's up to you to make sure or to uh, uh, find equations where there is a solution. If there's not a solution, there's also a command called minerr, M-I-N-E-R-R, -R, that minimizes the error, uh, finds the, the closest approximate answer for you. Okay, with that out of the way, let's talk about uh, minimizing. We can minimize or maximize, and that's often a handy thing to do. Let's write out an equation here uh, that we're going to minimize. This is one I've prepared. Sine x plus x squared over 4 minus 6x plus... 50. Now this doesn't have any physical meaning, but there are lots of times where you want to find the minimum value of equations that do have a physical meaning. Okay, so there's that and that. And there's what the equation looks like between uh, minus 10 and 10, which is the default that MathCAD uses. 
Well, it looks to me like there may be something else over there. So, and I know that there's no minimum to the left of 0 by looking at this equation earlier. So let's go from 0 to 20. Like I said, I've, I made this equation up so I know what it looks like, and I know the, the minima live in there. Now, there's more than one minimum, really. That's the lowest possible value. But this is called a local minimum, and that's called a local minimum. If I'm just trying to find where the curvature is positive and the slope equals 0, that point right there solves that condition, satisfies that condition. So does that one. So does this one. But this is lower than the other two. So this is really my global minimum. All right. There is a minimize command that I can use. OK, I have to give it an initial guess. Let's just say 0 again, because I don't know. Uh, let's say I don't know what this curve looks like. Say minimize f comma x. And it found the minimum for me. That's at 11.78. That's that value right there. In fact, let's put some grid lines on here so we know what we're looking at. Maybe make them not quite so obnoxious colors. OK, there we go. Now, this is not maybe the, as fine a grid as we'd like. So let's turn Auto Grid off. And rather than let it pick the number of grids, I'm going to tell it to use 10. If I did that right, there we go. It goes every 2. So it's pretty clear that this is somewhere in the neighborhood of 11. And 11.087 looks pretty close. Let's say there's a constraint now. Let's say that there is a value beyond which uh, I can't use x, or x has to be less than some value. That's when I have to use a solve block. In mathematics, or uh, I should say in optimization lingo, that's called a constraint. So let me get rid of this and maybe move this up here a little bit. See if I can get that out of the way. Maybe I'll squash it down a little bit. That still does the job for us. So let's take an initial guess. Again, I'll start x equals 0, and I'll start my solve block given. Now, here's where I get to put my constraint. Let's say there's some reason why we can't uh, allow x to be greater than some number. So if I say x has to be less than or equal to 10, find me the minimum value of my function for x less than or equal to 10. I can say minimize f comma x. And it'll tell me 10, because that really is the minimum right there. Let me blow this up. I'll, it looks kind of ugly, but you can see. Um, right there is where x equals 10. So that really is the lowest value, uh, given my constraint. But let's say, yeah, if I can do this now, there we go. Let's say uh, I give it x has to be less than or equal to 8 then the minimum should be right about there, somewhere in the neighborhood of 5. And so it is. Okay. Now, MathCAD reads left to right and top to bottom. So I can make this solve block go left to right if I want. Okay. There. Now, just out of curiosity, what if I give this a value of 10, which doesn't satisfy the constraint? it still finds the minimum for me. So it's pretty robust. Now, I'll put that down there oops, and put this here. With a little bit of simple formatting, I can conserve space and make the plot much easier to read. OK, so with my constraint placed at 8, that's the minimum it finds. If I place my constraint, say that it has to be x has to be greater than or equal to 14, I should find that. I should get somewhere in the neighborhood of 17. So let's do that. Greater than or equal to 14. And there it is, 16.78. So there you go. We've used solve blocks now to solve equations, solve systems of equations, and to find constrained minima. That's an optimization uh, function that you might find handy later. The next uh, talk I do will be on units in MathCAD.